At least seven months. Yeah. Wait. What? I'm pregnant. You should meet soon. Yeah, you should. Can I call you when I get to DC? Yeah. Is your daughter dead, Hannah? Like my son? Like my daughter? All right, haves and have not fans. Hope everybody's doing well. Now, there are going to be a number of videos like this where I talk about the characters who, well, are still alive and or their fates are left unknown. So I know it's really easy for people to just go, it's over. Why are we still talking about it? Because the show is not going to be done being talked about for quite a while, especially with the reunion special over the next couple weeks and the ending being as bad as it was. Yeah, this show isn't going to come back anytime soon. Not to mention, or excuse me, the topic of the haves and the have nots is not going to fade anytime soon. I mean, hell, there's it's 20, we're almost at the end of 2021 and people still ask me about too close to home. Let me just put that in perspective. Uh, not to mention people were begging for years for House of Pain to come back and we got the pains for as bad as that was until Tyler Perry decided to scrap it and go back to the House of Pain series. So is it impossible for the haves and have nots to come back? No, it's possible, but not very likely. But then again, based on the fanfare, look at Greenleaf. But then again, you know, I'm, I'm going into a tangent here and I don't want to do it. But all I'm saying is please avoid the unnecessary. It's over. Why are we still talking about it? This thing? No, we're talking about the theory or in my case, like, so what about Charles? Like what, if, what, what happens when Charles finds out about what happened to Candace? So before going further in the video, please take a moment to hit like, hit subscribe, Hit that bell notification icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel. And follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And also, again, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You all have been blowing the channel up over the past couple days. And like I said in my Veronica and Candace video, if the channel continues to move with this momentum and make as much ad revenue as it has been, I, I'll be able to pay for a house right off the lot. I'm not talking about some kind of like, you know, $200,000 house, but, you know, a, a good enough house. You know what I mean? But just please continue to support the channel comment and like it helps so the reason that a lot of people dislike the finale and trust and believe there were a lot of reasons to do so especially during the i'm really talking about the last 20 minutes or so of the episode basically the second half of the show when everybody got killed off left and right and especially with the way it just ended with hannah having a breakdown before <laughs> that's i still can't get over that screen that popped up Thank you all for the support from Tyler Perry. No, from Tyler Perry Studios to the cast of the haves and the have nots and own. We thank you so much. Well, we don't thank you for that finale epil ending. That is the question. There's so much left that was open ended. Like, you know, we don't know what happened next. Uh, what happens when Hannah finds out that Benny got d gunned down in this day? Will she go after the Malones, too? What happens when um, she finds out Catherine's dead? You know, did everybody die when the uh, bomb went off at David's house? Was Leo able to, you know, move away before the explosion got him? If he was standing right outside of the front door, was David further away from the uh, couch into like the kitchen or garage so he wasn't killed? You know, there, there are so many questions. But for this particular video, let's focus on the death of Candace and what happens when Charles finds out. Now, the way that, and I don't think Charles deserved to be a character that got a grandiose finale in himself. I know a lot of people wanted Candace and Charles to end up together. However, I called it. I'm like, there's no way in hell he's going to be in the finale. Like, if he made a last second rescue, I wouldn't be surprised because Landon made a point to tell Candace, Candace, we're always watching you. We know where you go. Yet she went down to the Malone Bar, a criminal crime, a crime family that was stated to be under investigation by the feds. Then she goes over to Jim Cryer's, well, Catherine Cryer's house where Jim is. And yet no one was watching her. It's almost as if, you know, the moment that Candace told Charles she was pregnant. Charles and Landon decide to focus on the move to D.C., 
and Charles said he could come by in a couple of days. So there's a couple of things here. One of two things. Number one, Charles, you know, finds out via the news that Candace Young is dead. Number two, maybe he decides, you know, you know what? Something doesn't sit right. I feel like I need to go down to Atlanta right now to check. I mean, Savannah right now to go check on Candace. So he goes there earlier than he initially initially anticipated and then finds out the bad news there or you know he actually goes on the day he planned to go anyway and then found out about all the death and whatnot so you know at the very least he would see hannah to see what happened but that's about it um and that's if he does that i mean the argument could be made that it might be best for his uh you know image and whatnot to distance himself as far away from this as possible but you know you could just tell by the look on his face and whatnot when candace said i'm pregnant you know my mom was like yeah he's probably just, i mean this is a guy who went from i need to see you i care about you i think i'm falling in love and this and that but the moment pregnancy came up he was like oh yeah ooh, this is going to be messy it's just one of those things where I could see the likes of an Oliver or somebody being like, well, maybe it's for the best, you know, that kind of thing. So I truly feel like Charles, the way they did his character. And like I said before, I don't hate Charles. I just felt like his entire story arc was unnecessary to the show. And the fact that he wasn't even in the finale, we don't even get his reaction to Candace's death or whatever. I feel like that proved that the Charles storyline should have never been introduced into the series. Because I remember when he was introduced and people began to kind of say, Tyler Perry, come on now. The haves and the have-nots has had its, uh, you know, moments where it felt like it was jumping the shark. But at the same time, the show had that ground level feeling to it. And I hate to make another comic book comparison, but kind of like the MCU, like a lot of people, I have friends, you know, if you watched Loki and stuff like that, and you know about the multiverse and whatnot coming into effect, a lot of people are like, you know, I like the ground level or, you know, planetary level heroes like an Iron Man or, um, you know, Spider-Man, Black Widow, Bucky, basically, quote unquote, human fighters, heroes and whatnot. But when you introduce these like multi-galaxy level beings, basically if you're a Dragon Ball fan power scaling, you kind of lose the fans because it gets too ridiculous. That's what it felt like on the haves and the have-nots where Candace messing around with local politicians and judges and stuff like that, businessmen, that's, 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 that's completely realistic. But to have her going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the president-elect, that's when you just went way too, you set the bar way too high. There's like... There's so many complications that come along with that, that it's stupid. But when it comes down to this situation, you just wasted years of storytelling that could have been utilized to better characterize Catherine or Jeffrey, especially Wyatt. But no, you decide to introduce this pre person going into the White House. Like, I stand by what I say in that... I feel like the Charles storyline might have ended in another direction, but I feel like because the Oval was birthed into existence, Tyler Perry decided, eh, whatever, what happens to the haves and have-nots happens because it's about to end anyway. I'm going to take the presidential storyline that I was going to do with Charles, and I'm going to make an entire show out of it on the Oval. And I mean, people, I remember people screaming, oh, when the haves and have-nots ends, you know, Charles and Candace, they can have their own version of Scandal, but it's going to be, you know, Charles and Candace in the White House instead of uh, Olivia Pope on ABC. And I was like, I'm not for that, but it will be interesting. Like, I was kind of warming up to the idea as we learn more about the character. But overall, it's like there's so much left to be answered. You know, like, what happened now? I, I guess Charles is going to the White House by himself. You know, how will it be impacted? You know, the fact that his wife died and now the woman that he, quote unquote, came to care about so much and he found out was carrying his third child is dead now like there's a lot of gravity to that situation that we'll never discover what about landon you know um will charles get mad at him because like i, I thought you were supposed to be watching her or something like that but it's like well to be completely honest i, I want to throw it out there i would not be surprised if charles just didn't care because of the fact that just based on how he 
and to an extent Landon reacted when they found out she was pregnant, it just seemed like they're going to distance themselves away from this. Now, you could argue that if Charles found out who did it, then he would go above and beyond to bring down the Malones once and for all. Yeah, Jim Cryer technically killed her, but Jim is dead now. So he'd go after the Malones because they're the ones who played a major role in her death anyway. So I feel like overall, it's a situation where you could definitely see a continuation of the haves and the have-nots through the eyes of um, a Malone spinoff, which have... And I've been saying a Malone spinoff for years, but here's the thing, though. Because of how the Malones were written in the final episode, it reminded me of the intimidating, imposing, and threatening Malones they were when they were first introduced to the show. I feel like over the past few seasons, they've really watered down the Malones when they're not supposed to be these incompetent hitmen. They're supposed to be serious threats who, when you call upon them, you have to think about it long and hard where it's like, okay, these are the people who I don't want to offend. I want to respect them. I want to hire them but then make sure I don't step on any toes. And at the very least, I never want to be on the opposing end of their wrath. However, you've made it where Vinny can't even kill Wyatt successfully. And, you know, he talks about how the family, there isn't a lot of heirs to the throne, which makes no sense compared to the numerous amount of resources and people that they seem to have had to begin with. So to actually have them in a position like this, it could almost be like ruthless, where I don't know where the story is going with Ruthless in the Oval. But I do feel like at the end of the day, it's going to be the government shutting down the compound. So you can kind of have the same thing where it's going to be Charles in the wrap of the United States versus, uh, you know, the Malones. And that'll be pretty interesting because you could have quote unquote agents in the freaking White House that they don't know about. So I feel like overall, there could be a lot of, you know, Thanos versus the Avengers level showdowns going on it could be hella good where it wouldn't just be like a big shootout but there'll be some espionage some double agents it could actually work where you could take these characters who i didn't really care about and make a hell of a show because if it was written and this is only if charles is written to actually care about candace's death as opposed to well she's dead and that baby's gone too so that's one less thing to worry about one less thing to, i was watching ham i was listening to the hamilton soundtrack last night but i feel like the charles i mean from charles landon conley oliver um kyle and um damn, what's his name kyle and uh the dude who was the attorney general kyle and scott there's like freaking a half a dozen or more characters in an entire storyline that went completely nowhere for no apparent reason. It's like you just ended it to end it. And that is pretty much it. So what do you think, guys? Um, It would have been crazy if Candace did take the initial offer that Oscar had. It's like, hey, you help me bring Charles down so he loses this election. You'll get a major payday as well as me, of course, but then you stick with him so he wins the next election and you're first lady. Maybe he'll win a second term. That's eight years. Not to mention, after the White House, you can get book deals, appearances, play the long game, and you're going to come out a lot better than if you just try to con him real quick because these are people you aren't used to. These aren't street-level politicians. This is the White House here. But she didn't do it, and it's crazy how things would have worked out, but Overall, I mean, it's like Candace said, I can't give up the street life, you know, like she had so many outs, but decided to stick with her instincts and look where it got her. So with that being said, you know, what do you think? How do you think Charles would have reacted to the news of Candace's death? Do you think he would have plotted revenge or do you think he would have just turned away from it? I feel like the news or maybe Landon could spin the story where it's like, you know, Charles, a widower, he met Candace and her bad reputation, her past caught up with her. So there's that. Um, the pregnancy thing, I don't know if that would be... I feel like that could be covered up. They could probably cover that up if they had the right people in charge. But overall, you know, I feel like if you weren't going to do 
a conclusion to the Charles storyline, even if it wasn't him and Candace getting back together, you honestly should not have added him to the cast. I believe the actor is in the show called Run the World. I think that's a female-driven show. I've actually followed that Instagram page. I meant to look into it, though. I, I heard it's good now, but if you, if I find out where to watch it, I might watch a couple episodes because I know he's doing good on that. I know he played in, a, what's it called, the Christmas Switch or the Princess Switch with Vanessa Hutchins on Netflix. Uh, so Nick Shigar, he's a good actor, very good actor, but I just feel like the character of Charles, like, there was no need of bringing him into the fold if you weren't going to really conclude the storyline. But, you know, it is what it is. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's have a good discussion. And if you want to donate to the channel, feel free to do so on PayPal or Cash App. Or at the very least, make sure you take a moment to hit like and subscribe.